I see, I see. Sure. Yeah, okay, so let's start. So hello, hello everyone. Welcome to today's IBIM seminar. And uh, we are very honored to have Professor Li Wen with us today to give us a very interesting talk on area aquatic ro robots capable of crossing the air water boundary and hitchhiking on surfaces. So as usual, I will give a very brief introduction of Professor Li Wen. Li Wen is a full professor at Mechanical Engineering and Automation, Beihang University. His current including science robotics, science advances, nature communications, IJRR, IEEE, TRO, etc. His representative work was featured by Nature, Science, MIT Technology Review, BBC, and other scientific media presses. He was the recipient of the Chinese National Science Fund Fund for Excellent Young Scholars in 2018 and Stephen Walker Young Investigator Award in 2020. He led many projects, including the Chinese National Science Foundation, key project, etc. Li Wen served as an associate editor of Software Robotics and associate editor of IEEE Robotics and Automation Letters, etc. So now I will give the floor to Professor Li Wen. Let's welcome. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Li Jun. So can you hear me well? So I just want to double check my voice can be heard. I can hear you clearly. Yeah, thank you. So uh, thank you very much for the nice introduction by Dr. Li and thank you for the invitations. Uh, today I'm going to, uh, I'm Li Wen from uh, uh, Beihang University. Um, um, I'm very happy to share with you some uh, recent research progress from my lab, uh, aerial aquatic hitchhiking robots um, inspired by remora suckerfish. So uh, actually uh, this project is, um, is uh, we have done this uh, for a while. I'm going to share with you some of my experiments from uh, uh, years ago. So um, uh, can you see my slides moving? I just want to double check that. Okay, good. So uh, in the year- yep, I, of can, uh, I can see the slides moving in. Thank you, thank you. So in the year of 2011, uh, actually I was not working on the, uh, on the remora. So I'm gonna introduce what remora is later. So I was working on sharks uh, uh, with uh, Professor George Lauder at Harvard University. Uh, as you see uh, from this video, uh, uh, there are lots, thousands of tentacles on the skin of sharks. Uh, I'm very curious about uh, how the tentacles can uh, come function in the water. So what I did uh, during my postdoc is uh, I took the tentacle model out and reconstructing the data and uh, make an artificial shark skin. Uh, we found a way, it's kind of multi-material 3D printing to print thousands of artificial tentacles on the flexible membrane so it can bend like a wave, as it show in this uh, in this uh, figure, um, and uh, we tested in, as hydrodynamic functions. Uh, so very fortunately, that George and I published this paper on the cover of JEV. So the story starts on here, as uh, the editor of JEV want a very nice shark image. So and then I I'm trying to find a one uh, from. Uh, Google, you know, I, I try to find a shark image, but it's very interesting to see that there are mysterious hitchhikers, uh, you know, they're, they're um, attached to the sharks on many of the Google image I searched. So I was curious, what are the uh, uh, mysterious hitchhikers are? So, and then I went to the museum of, of, of the University Museum of Harvard. So, um, you, some of you might have visited them, this museum. So it has several floors. On the first floor, the second floor is open to the public. So you can see like the mammals, you can see the dinosaur bones and many other things. 
But on the basement, the negative minus one floor, there are hundreds of thousands of fish species that are connected in the jars. And uh, the, so uh, Harvard University had a very good administrators. Uh, so I would like to appreciate uh, Carson Hartle, who is who has been working in the Harbor Fish Connection for many, many years. And I asked him the question, so what do you think the hitchhiker is? And Harson is uh, very sophisticated. And he told me that, okay, it's a remora. And he guided me to the, uh, to the, to the shelf, uh, to the jars of the remora and showed me this image. Now I showed him this uh, real thing. So this is a, a preserved remora specimen. And uh, that's my first impression of our remora in uh it's uh, although it's a specimen the stat and what's interesting if you can see the label the paper label on it it's uh it's 1901 which means that it's 120 years ago uh, it has been preserved for a long time so uh this is a very interesting start of my journey of uh, remorse and then i okay since uh in, uh, we know it's remora soccer fish, and then I search online. So this is a video from National Geographic. You can see that remora can hitch like to uh, can attach to many marine animals, including the sharks, the box fishes, and sometimes to the human divers, because it has a very special uh, adhesive disc located dorsally on its uh, on its back. So uh, here is a remora. Uh, here's a remora. You can see that. Uh, can you see my cursor? Um, so uh, this is a, on the back. Uh, so this is a suction pad, uh, which can generate large shear force and also the pore force along the normal direction. So to uh, understand uh, more cl uh, more details, to provide more details about the adhesive disk, uh, we need to understand its mechanism. But it is, let's recall the previous adhesive mechanism in nature, such as uh, geckos, which you use uh, the dry, which is actually uh, dry adhesion uh, using uh, its CETA or micro um, nano scale, micro nano scale here to stick on surfaces. Uh, uh, and also the, the, there's a, the, there are tree frogs uh, uh, using wet adhesion, wet adhesion mechanism uh, based on capillary uh, force mechanism. But um, until then, it's like uh, 2011, uh, 2012, uh, very few studies uh, have worked on underwater adhesion. So uh, I think the remora and also the octopus suckers uh, very good examples. We choose remora to uh, as a template, biological template to understand the underwater adhesion. Uh, I think that's a very good example. So to understand, provide the biological details of the remoras, we uh, cut the head of the remora specimen and put it in the in a, a micro CT machine. We can see that this is a scanning results. Uh, so. I'm going to freeze the video here. You can see that there are different colors. The red color represents the flesh, uh, which is soft tissues, which are soft tissues of the remora head. While the white represents the bony tissues, uh, we can see the structure is pretty complex, uh, especially the bony structures. So to uh, provide quantitative results of that, we uh, uh, reconstruct the disc of bony structures and obtain the results as the pink image shows. Uh, where we can see there are uh, rows. Uh, so this is an entire uh, uh, adhesive disc of the bony structure of a remora and the rows of a namelae. And on the namelae, there are rows of the hierarchical structure, uh, we call it spinous. So we keep using different approaches. Uh, besides a micro CT machine, we're using uh, SEM, scanning electron microscope, so that we can see the more details. And then we can see that, okay, this is a, a single spaniel 
uh, which is about 200 uh, micro um, and at its bottom diameter, and its height is about 300 microns. And also, we, uh, according to some literature, literature studies, this lamellae structure with lamellae on top of it. It's not a static structure, unlike the gecko's uh, lamellae. The remora, uh, remora's lamellae are active, so they can be rotated by, uh, which means erect or fold down its lamellae by using the depressor muscles and also erector muscles. So, which is a, which means that the melee is an active structures. Um, so to mimic the active structure of the melee, we uh, build a very simple biomimetic melee mechanisms. So it's working uh, principle is like, we can use a soft artificial muscle uh, where we can use uh, pressure or uh, pressure wise or deeper pressure wise the, the artificial muscle, it can generate a linear motions. We can use other ways uh, besides air or water. We can use electric as well to generate in this motion. And then uh, this linear motion can turn into a rotations here. Uh, and then it can actuate the biomimetic ventral process and eventually make the namale uh, uh, pitch uh, following uh, uh, the, uh, so in a certain manner. So it's con the melee pitch motion can be controllable by the linear locomotion of the soft muscles. So uh, this is a this is how we build the biomimetic melee mechanisms based on the uh, the biological structures. And next, the challenge is how do we can uh, fabricate the whole disc, the entire disc out? Because it's a very complex structure. I do not only have rigid structure, but also have a soft tissue, and do not only have a centimeter size structure, but also have micro scale uh, structures. Uh, how do we, how, how do we can fabricate it out? So uh, the first uh, fabrication approach we use is uh, multi-material 3D printing. So as shown in this figure, we can see that different color represents different stiffness. So the, from the blue color to the rigid, uh, to the red color, the stiffness spans four orders of magnitudes. So it's uh, from soft to rigid. Uh, we carefully design the whole disk and following the biological principles. And then uh, we uh, print this out from just one shot. So um, you, you, you log into the files and then they print and then whole disk out. So without one structures, uh, one structure is an exception is uh, the, uh, the spaniel structure I mentioned. So we use, uh, uh, because it's a very sharp and also uh, uh, stiffness is pretty high. So we use a carbon fiber and carbon fiber plates and using high resolution lasers to cut it. So we can see that the tip, uh, like this is a, a, the artificial spinules is even sharper than the biological counterparts. And also its stiffness is, uh, is over 200 gigapascal. So, which is also, uh, higher than the biological counterparts. And then we insert, uh, insert thousands of these uh, uh, MLAs uh, to the disk. And then uh, we flip it over and are adding the soft actuator to mimic the director and uh, to mimic the muscles of the MLA. And then eventually we can, uh, we can see that uh, we can actuate in the disk uh, like the biological counterparts. So on the left, microscopic image, we can see that uh, uh, the micro scale uh, the spinules here. And on the right, uh, we show that it's, it's moving uh, by its uh, uh, artificial muscles. But we can see that Namele can be erected up and fold down. Uh, we also compare this magnitudes and the motion part of with the uh, of the artificial disk with the biological counterparts. And it looks very similar. Uh, we did some analysis that's uh, biological relevant. So um, after all this exploration, we believe that, okay, this prototype can, can be used to understand how the um, animals using their disk could do stick on surfaces. So that's a, a 2011, in 2011, uh, uh, the research, uh, we have done a lot of experimental data, but we here I summarize 
the experimental data he, uh, uh, for for short. Uh, so it's a uh, the disk can generating a pull off force along the normal direction, uh, and it can achieve a maximal force of three over three hundred times of its own weight. So it's that's uh, I think that's a uh, that, that force is over fifteen newtons. Uh, compared to like a palm size of the disc. Uh, and also it's a shear force can be adjusted by, uh, by its anomaly. If you erect an anomaly and change its uh, angle, it's a force will go up. Uh, and, and so, which means that the, uh, the animals can, when they stick on the surface, they can hold tight or release they can control the angles of the anomaly. Uh, they can achieve that. So to demonstrate the possible applications of the, the disk, we mount this uh, uh, disk prototype to a very simple uh, robot. Uh, we call this remote uh, underwater vehicle, uh, which can only do X, Y, and Z directions. So we mimic uh, very simply, it can swim, and also attach to an overhaul surface and then detach uh, to mimic very simple uh, uh, motion of the remorse uh, hitchhiking behavior. Uh, but we know that uh, after uh, we look at this video, we see that the, the robot is have a lots of limitations. The first limitation it has uh, cables. Uh, so all the tubes, abstraction sources, and also the power uh, are outside of the robot. So uh, it's, uh, it's working in a tether state. The second one is we can see the robot, uh, its maneuverability is, is pretty uh, uh, unlimited, is limited. So they cannot do uh, very complex motions. And also the disk itself can only uh, attach to flat surface. Um, but if you think about the natural surface, it's curved, it's not flat. And also, it's very rough, slippery, and some uh, sometimes uh, the the surface are incomplete with some holes or some uh, bio uh, biofilms or uh, uh, many other complex situations. So we thought about okay, uh, can we do uh, more powerful robots uh, which can work in you know, larger domains and also attach to more complex surfaces and make it more realistic? So. Uh, that's why we uh, first the look bike and and see uh, how the animals can can attach to a very complex surface. So this video is uh, is made by uh, uh, by Science Magazine Megan Cannawell. Uh, we're working together to uh, to finish this video. And we can see that uh, the remora can actually uh, attach to a dolphin. And when the dolphin leap out of water and rotate its body, trying to dislodge the remora, but it's it's still very challenging to do that. So this gives me uh, some inspiration that the remora suction pads can not only stick underwater, but also they can stick uh, with very powerful large force in the air. So can we get some inspired from this mechanism? Uh, we can build a robot that can stick not only on water, but also can um, stick in the air. So I think that will be interesting. Um, and also we noticed that in the lab, we have, uh, made, uh, we, have a, we raise a, re a remora and also we let the remora stick on the pori surface with many holes. But what's interesting is remora can stick to this challenging surface just by using part of its disc. So we call this partial disk attachments. Uh, I think this is uh, uh, better than uh, the commercial suction pads where if you have any leakage, you cannot stick on it, but the animal can do that. And also on the right image, you can see that this is a, a freshly dead remora uh, and anesthetized remora. They can stick to like a half uh, plexiglass. So how can this happen? Um, how remora did this? Um, with this, um, we uh, we have done a very simple experiments. We uh, illuminate uh, the plexiglass from the side, 
and uh, did uh, um, experiments. We attached the remora specimen to the plexiglass, and we can see that uh, uh, actually uh, the disc uh, form uh, many separate uh, uh, chambers. We can see that each one of the chambers are uh, independent. So even if some of the chambers are not attached, while the rest of the chambers can remain attached to the surface. And also we uh, put the remora uh, under microscope. Well, we can see that uh, there's uh, some connecting tissues and also uh, the disc and the is very flexible. Uh, I'm gonna play this video again. Uh, we can see here. Uh, so this is a connecting tissue and the namella is very flexible. So uh, with this understanding, we think that, okay, uh, I think the previous disc is not enough. Uh, we can um, make this uh, disc more powerful. So, so here's also, we show this uh, morphology of this uh, remora. So uh, morphological features of the biological remorse disc. Um, we name the, uh, uh, this way, uh, this type of adhesion, uh, we term this redundant adhesion. So here is a cross section of the namella, so uh, of the remora disc. So here's a remora bony structure, and uh, uh, and remora soft tissue are overlaid on the top, and the yellow represents a connective tissue, and then the disc limb. So this is a complete uh, structure from the cross section of use. Um, so after understanding this, we incorporating all these features into the, uh, uh, our biomimetical prototype. Um, and we can see that um, our robotic prototype uh, can also form uh, independent uh, chambers. And still, it can move its anomaly uh, like a, uh, the animals do. And also, with, but how does the redundant adhesion could work? in those uh, realistic. Uh, so for example, uh, this, uh, this disc can pick up like, uh, oh, sorry. So can pick up like uh, uh, objects with curved surface. And also uh, they can attach to surface with convex or con concave objects and also uh, uh, grip or uh, attach to uh, objects with very complex shape. So I'm, I'm going to play this video again. So this is a grip of the cell phone. This is a grasp of the, like a gargle and also uh, uh, objects with curved surface, um, adhesive tape, and also the concave surface. We print this, uh, 3D printed the piss and also the, the conch. So um, so this is, a, I think this is, a, we took that, the, advantage of the, the uh, remora disc of redundant adhesion and incorporating into our biomimetic disc. Um, and then uh, we uh, simply uh, summarize another feature of the biomimetic, biomimetic disc is if we want to get rid of the tethers, we don't want to use the air to inflate in the lamellae. So how did remora do that? Remora have the muscles uh, so we can use uh, uh, hydrostatic uh, to uh, actuate in the namelli and rotate it while still maintain the re uh, redundant adhesion feature. So here's a comparison of our previous prototype and the current prototype. We can see that under some kind of, we stick um, the wooden stick into the disc, uh, it can remain sticking on the surface. Well, the previous prototype cannot do that. And also we use the uh, use a hydrostack to actuate in the namely to make the muscles of the remora uh, so that we can uh, directly use the water uh, to uh, uh, locally actuate in the remora to make the uh, namely move. So by uh, incorporating all this uh, uh, feature together, uh, we have made uh, the, uh, we have implement the bi new biomimetic prototypes. Uh, we can see that it can be actuated uh, hydraulically and bend the disc 
uh, to attach to curved surface, and also it can uh, um, can be detached by cable driven motors, and everything is on a, a, a very constrained or a small plate. And, and then we thought about, okay, how we can add the disc to a robot, so which it cannot only swim on the water and also uh, fly in the air. If we can make the transition between the air and water surface, that would be great. So we revisit some of the uh, previous research about aerial aquatic robots. So here's a, uh, a robot made, uh, made by uh, Harvard University, Kevin, Kevin Chen, uh, who uh, had used uh, combat stations to, uh, to get rid of the surface tension and fly from the water into the air. Uh, and also there are some other uh, research uh, use uh, different approaches. So here is uh, the one prototype from uh, Imperial College London which is using similar way compensations to get out of the water, but it takes uh, like over 800 seconds. Um, while some other more simple way, you, they're using uh, like the, uh, the fixed wings uh, directly using propulsors to fly out of water. But this, uh, this kind of approach is a little bit hard to control because you have to make the, the airplanes have a, you know, control its angle uh, when it get out of water, you know, perfect angle so that otherwise it cannot achieve the, uh, the boundary crossing. So, and also there are some biomimetic ways by still using combustations, but I think uh, I, uh, the records of crossing the air water boundary uh, is 1.6 second uh, in previous second. Uh, in previous uh, prototypes. So we want to make it faster. So uh, uh, can, the, uh, can, the, uh, can the robot cross air water boundary uh, within just one second or uh, even faster? So our prototype can achieve a transition of uh, just the three, uh, 0.35 seconds. So we actually uh, use a very simple approach to achieve this as we using a self-folding machine, a self-folding propellers, which actually fold itself on the water. And when it touches the surface, water surface, it can uh, uh, spanning out. Uh, so it can, uh, can, can fly in the air. So, and the whole process um, can just take uh, less than three, 0 0.4 seconds. And, and can, when it fly from the air into the water, it can fold itself automatically. So here's a side view of the robot. When it get out of water, so, and it can, you can see the smooth transition of the robot uh, by simply just using a uh, cell folding propeller. using Hello, Professor Li Wen. Seems like there are some problems. And um, we couldn't hear you clearly. That's correct. I cannot hear. 
so or, or see Professor Went anymore. Yeah, I guess we lost we lost maybe there, his internet got some problems. Hello, uh, yeah, let's wait a bit. Maybe there are some internet issues with Professor Li Wen. Let's wait a minute. No problem. Yeah. Well, it's too bad that lecture was going so well. Yeah, yeah, it's so interesting. And I'm just uh, fascinated about his talk. And I think uh, I asked Zhong Chang to help us to connect to him. Let's have some patience. Yes, I just texted him in the WeChat. So let's wait. Yeah. He have replied to me yet. OK, maybe he's trying to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he is logging right now. Okay, let's wait. Uh, great. Sorry, everyone. Let's have some patience.
uh, is he back? Oh, he said that he's online now. Yes, but, I see uh, he's working on something. Yeah, I still can, cannot see him. Hello, Professor Li Wen. Can mm -hmm. you hear me? We still cannot see you or hear you. Okay, we are trying to fix the problem. So sorry everyone for the interruption. That, that reminds like reminds like if you go to a nice restaurant or something very good, it takes a long time to wait. It just yes, like a talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I mean it's worth what to wait for this great presentation to continue. Yeah, that's true. I agree. Especially since we've already seen um, yeah. the first, yes. yeah. the first few, yes. the first few dishes. Yeah. You see, yes, I'm yeah. looking forward to see how these dishes apply to the the drone and attach a different surface. Oh, it's I can see him now. I can see you now, Professor Li Wen. Um, but it's it's froze. Yes, yeah, still very lucky, I think. Could you just try to turn off your camera and then try to speak to us, whether if it's the internet problem? So, yeah. So Chang, uh, I will have a ha, have a lecture uh, on three o'clock, okay. fifteen minutes later. So could you help me take over this sure. if I need to run early? I can <laughs> do that. So much. No problem. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'll keep recording and keep look at you, but uh, I'll run just uh, for the yeah. lecture. No problem. Yeah. Thank you. So let's I, hope. I, I, in fact, I'm jealous you host today's seminar. So, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I feel very lucky, really. It's so interesting. Okay, so can you see me? We I can, can see hear you. you. Yes, I can hear but, you. Can yeah. you see me as well? Yes. Yes, we can see okay, you. As so, well. yeah, yeah. So, I, I just switched another uh, Wallace called uh, Tables. Uh, I think this one is better uh, than the previous one. I'm sorry for the, uh, I, I don't know what the issue is, <laughs> but, but so, so is my voice okay? Is my? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm sorry for the interruption. Uh, so yeah. I'm going to uh, share my screen and keep going. So maybe you can let me know which slides I'm, I'm stuck. We are, just, we are just showing the, the slow motion of the drone. We are showing, yeah. showing the, the folding propellers. The, oh, the really? video of yeah. the folding propellers and the, it break out of the water and it takes less than some seconds. Yeah. Okay. It's just okay. the interesting part. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, 
start from the breaking point. So can you see my screen? Um, let's if, wait a moment. It's trying to connect, screen? I guess. No, really? it's black. Yes. Oh yeah, now, now good. Yeah. Oh. So the next uh, next slide, I guess. Okay, so I'm going uh, to video. So I'm going to show here. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. Okay. Yes, it's yes, here. Yeah, the video. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, cool. Yeah, I'm so sorry that's because this is a new room. I just I tested this room. Uh, so uh, because of problem, uh, I'm sorry for everyone. Uh, for uh, waiting for uh, extra 10 seconds. Uh, so I'm going to uh, continue uh, my talk. So here's uh, we show that uh, this robot can uh, across air um, by unfold its uh, propellers automatically without any power input. And then, um, so I'm going to do uh, first a shot on my video. First. Um, stop video. OK. So and also we show that uh, from the side view, uh, you can see that the robot can transist the air water surface uh, in a very smooth manner. And also they can go back. Uh, uh, and also uh, this motion is uh, very continuous. They can execute this uh, aerial water uh, uh, transition in a very continuous manner. So if I, my voice is uh, stopped, you can let me know, okay? Sure. Okay, yeah, okay. Sorry for that, okay. And, and also we uh, compare the robot's transition speeds versus time uh, using different propellers. Uh, we can see the first row is a self-folding propeller. Its time is uh, 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 less than 0 0.44 second. And also the second row is a commercial aerial propeller, which took around 1.06 second. And the final one is uh, uh, it's a fixed unfolded aerial uh, propeller, which took about 1.4 second. Well, we compare all types of three propellers using uh, the same robot. And I found that the sulfur propellant is much better than the rest of two uh, scenarios. Um, and, and then we uh, implement, uh, we combine the suction pad with the uh, air aquatic uh, robot. And uh, we finish the control, uh, the control part, and also, re uh, and also the power, and, and as well the actuation of the MLA. And, and the mechanism for detachments and putting everything together. Uh, we make the robot and we can see the robot can attach to a moving surface. Um, and, and also we analyze the force uh, by using uh, uh, the ATI force transducers and also by putting a high-speed camera outside, we can see the process of how the, the robot can attach to a moving surface. Actually, uh, it come with the three stages. Uh, it first approach the surface, and then they have a contact phase. Um, and also they can slide a little bit, a slide backwards a little bit. And finally, when uh, uh, it reach a equivalent, and then it can attach the follow and uh, the moving plate. So uh, based on this, uh, we have made uh, some more uh, interesting demos right here because uh, we hope that robot can do some animal-like behavior such as uh, kingfishers. The kingfisher can uh, dive into the water and then, then uh, snag the prey. Um, and now we can make the robot do the similar things. Uh, so they can fly uh, uh, into the water and uh, attached to a plate and fly out of water. So, and also we show that uh, the robot can, uh, uh, so some application of the area aquatic hitchhiking robot in the wild. Uh, so this is a demonstration in the mountain streams. Uh, it can also uh, attach to the rock in the turbulent. Um, and also, uh, this is a uh, the, the, it can attach to the rock, 
uh, with very uneven surface in the turbulent flow. And also uh, we show that uh, it can also work in the, uh, the sea water in the oceanic. So, uh, so they can fly out of water uh, uh, on the seabed. It can also attach to a host, a swimming host on the water. We can see that. There. So this is a, a, a swimming uh, remote uh, a robot and here's a hitchhiking robot. So here's you know, what it caught from this onboard camera, a different depth. Um, and it can also grasp a object out of water and fly into the air. So, with this, uh, I would like to uh, share some of the future perspective of the, of the robot. So we hope the robot can carry out some uh, aerial observations and also can uh, inspect the uh, submerged structures. And also we uh, hope the robot can uh, survey the marine life or grasping environmental objects and fly out of water. So, um, uh, so the way we, uh, oh, I would like to share some of the experiments we, we do uh, do research in the lab is uh, we get inspired from the remoras or the animals and we make the robot. And that's not the end. We also use the robot to test the biological hypothesis. Um, and I think this process of going the bike in the forest would improve our designs. Um, and uh, uh, because uh, I do not have some extra time, uh, I, here uh, I want to quickly show some other projects in the lab. For example, our lab is uh, doing some uh, octopus inspired uh, rippers uh, by using different uh, uh, structures, materials, and also trying to apply this to the uh, medical uh, like uh, throat swab fields. And also we uh, make uh, the, uh, the softer robots, like the softer creepers with variable stiffness. And uh, we implement new sensors, um, multi-module sensors for the soft robot and also teach the soft robot with complex motions and apply the soft robot in the ocean. For example, they can grasp in like sea food animals um, in a mobile manner. We explore the soft robots, uh, uh, the fabrication, uh, their uh, uh, modeling and also their controls. Uh, so uh, with this, uh, uh, I would like to uh, thank my uh, my lab. Uh, and also, if you have uh, some uh, interested in more details of the uh, my talk, I'm sorry for the interruption, uh, but uh, you can check more details on these two papers. One paper is in 2017, which is more focusing on the uh, the desk, while the second paper uh, published this year is more about the system that can cross air water boundary uh, and perform redundant adhesion and hitchhiking on surfaces. Uh, with that, I would like to thank my lab and uh, thank you for your listening. I'm happy to take your questions. I'm sorry for the interruptions. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> great, great. Thank you, Lee Dr. Wen. Uh, Wen. Yeah. Lee for presenting his work to us and this is amazing work and, and I don't feel so sorry about the the the, the, the interactions yeah. I mean this is something is not controlled by you and us but as I said I think your talk is definitely worthwhile this kind of in, waiting for the continuity and uh, I actually have some questions but I do want to leave this opportunity to other audience if you have a question please Ask, raise your hand, ask question to Dr. Wen, uh, Wen Li, Li Wen. Okay, maybe people are pretty shy. <laughs> uh, shall, I, shall we start from me? Okay, so 
I am very like uh, I'm very uh, fascinated about the the suction disk you did that like you present in the first half of the presentation. Looks like they are like well designed and function very well. And I can tell this structure is very precise. I, I to be honest, I feel it is like an elegant design. But I can see most of the tests is operate in a clear water. But when I mentioned later in the air, uh, in the ocean environments, but the environment, but the water is no longer clear anymore. For example, you might have some like other up, like uh, particles or maybe some other stuff like a seagrass. I wonder whether the function of the suction disk will be like significantly re reduced by this kind of like environment particles. Okay. So I think this is a very good question. In the realistic, real environments, uh, not only, there are not only particles, there might be some other, uh, like a biofilm or any other kind of pollutions mm -hmm. uh, on the surface. So I think for animals, uh, they were fine. So they're able to stick to very challenging surface uh, or even incomplete surface. So I think the materials, the surface materials are really important to overcome this, uh, these challenges. So first the remorse, uh, the, uh, the disc, the soft tissue are really flexible. So they have really young, uh, low young modulus mm -hmm. so that it uh, can adapt to the local asperities and form the seal and provide powerful adhesions. So that's uh, uh, that's one. And also, also uh, they have mucus. Where uh, in this paper, in, in my talk today, I do not have uh, involved any mucus study, but but I, I the animals do have the mucus. They can help to make the seal. So in some other papers of my research, we uh, we did uh, uh, some research on the mucus. Uh, mm -hmm. So it actually uh, can not only play as uh, function as uh, uh, for seal, but also for uh, lubrications. So I think that's a uh, uh, first is mucus, and then it's the very soft material of of the disc. Uh, I think that, that that's a uh, there uh, two keys. I come up with mind that they overcome like the particles and pollution on the surface while still make the adhesion happen. I see. I see. Yeah. And uh, another question I had is the the limits of the suction disk, because I can tell the suction disk uh, we you designed in the previous study is is more like uh, uh, it's pretty very it's a very compact already, but it's still like it's larger than the the, the soft gripper you show later. So I wonder since this is such well-designed device, what is possible to apply them to a larger application? For example, the, the later, the soft gripper you show, like can we make the subjects much more smaller and attached to them, like for example, to, to some like, for example, like, like a huge hand shape, like the gripper, something like that. Okay, so I think your question is, is about the size yes. effect. Of the suction, of the suction pads, mm -hmm. can they make it a very a smaller so that yes. can function like a gripper, so they can attach to uh, surfaces even yes. with curvature or complex shape? Yes. Yeah, I think this is a uh, this is a very good question. Uh, so I think there's a trade-off. If you make it smaller, it mm -hmm. can, of course, uh, uh, attach to surface, but its force will, will goes down. So uh, re think about the remorse suction pads, which is about our palm size, it can generate in like a 100 newtons force. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's enough for, uh, uh, for it to stay on the fast swimming hosts. Mm -hmm. Well, if you, your, your suction pad is very small, you can pick up like a very tiny objects up to like a cell phone, but you're not able to generate a very high force. But that's a, that's something very interesting worth exploring is mm -hmm. how they generating very high force at a very small size, which means mm -hmm. that um, a very high generating very high stress uh, suction pad. Uh, yeah, that's a very interesting question. I see. But, thank you. Yeah, thank you for answering. I saw, uh, <clears throat> I saw uh, guy comment. 
uh, raise his hands. Can you ask a question? Yeah. yeah. So I really enjoyed your lecture, uh, Professor Wen. Um, one f fact that intrigues me is the the, the animal can um, exert uh, uh, can achieve par partial um, uh, clinging to the shark. What is what is the biological advantage, if any, of that? Do they actually actively release part sometimes and then reattach, or mm. or is that just um, yeah? What is that for? Why did they evolve in that way? So I think this is a, a very good question. So first is uh, they can use part of the disc to attach to a surface to increase the success session rate of hitchhiking to a really challenging surface. Sometimes when they, first uh, on one side is they want to catch up with the animals. There's during this hitchhiking process, we call the hitchhiking process is, is really tricky for the animals. So the surface is moving uh, and also it's very fast. They want to catch up with it. So you cannot make sure, uh, so the animal cannot make sure that the entire disc can make a perfect seal and then uh, uh, and, and make the attached the following. So what they do is they try to attach part of it and then make a part of it attach first and then make the rest of it attached. So mm -hmm. you increase the rate of the succession. I think that's one. Uh, the second is, uh, they, when they attach to, already attach to the animals, what they do is they uh, very commonly detach itself to eat the, uh, the like the, some of the, the, uh, the food, uh, the rest of the food from the host. So they detach itself and grab the food and quickly return. So, and also this uh, feature uh, make the animal, so they have to, uh, to may sometimes make a partial disc and detach itself and come back. So this reversible happens hundreds of times per day. So I think that's a, that's a tuitions or that's a motivation of the animals having these features uh, uh, of redundant adhesion uh, so they can attach very easily and also always ready to detach and reattach. Fascinating. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Okay. Is there any other question from the audience? Oh yeah, I saw Logan raise his hand. Logan, please. Hi. Yeah, nice talk, Mr. Wen. Um, this is very interesting. I was wondering if you could talk more about the thought process and design of the um, propeller that folds and like. How did you decide on the material, uh, the exit strategy, sort of like uh, this one raised out perpendicular? I was wondering if it would be beneficial to do an angle or uh, yeah, that kind of stuff. OK, so uh, so actually, uh, I've been designing the, sorry, is my voice clear? Is we my voice hear. clear? Yeah, we yeah. can still hear yes. you. Yeah. So actually, uh, when we designed the self-propeller, uh, self-folding propeller, we actually uh, we uh, we bought a commercialized uh, uh, propeller and adding to it. So uh, we just chose exactly the same size of the blades with a fixed propeller and a commercial propeller, and we found that it's useful. We actually do not do uh, extra like a uh, fluid analysis. With a blade. Oh, I heard some noise, but I'm not sure it's. Yeah, I think someone tells me a mic. Okay, but but yeah, so we did not do very detailed analysis of of how you know the detailed design of the self floating propellers. But that's something we're doing right now. Is we hope to use some uh, 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 optimizations to optimize the. Uh, the blades so that it can um, unfold faster during the interface. So what I can tell is that during our uh, experiments, it unfolds automatically at the interface 
from so its speed change is really important. You know, it's on water, it's rotating very uh, at a slow speed. And I, once a propeller emerges out of water, it turns into a very high speed. So the speed change, uh, I think it's a crucial factors for, the, uh, for increasing the transitional speeds from our experiments. This, so it rotates from a, a few hundreds uh, uh, rounds per, per minute to like uh, 10 times or even more than that in the air. So how this fast change in speed could happen as fast as possible. So I think that's a design principle, uh, but we did not have a detailed uh, like analysis of, uh, regarding the, uh, the fluid analysis or, or about that. But I think that's uh, what we're going to do in our next step. Thank you. That's great. Yeah, I, actually, your answer like inspired me to think about like, can can we like design some like escape strategy that can show the uh, rotation uh, RPM at different phase of the transition? Therefore, we can make maximize the uh, expanding speed of the pair. Therefore, like further increase the escape uh, speed. Something like that. I mean, that's a very interesting topic, and I think I mean it's almost the the end of time and thank you Dr. Li Wen for presenting a great work to us and thank you an audience to attend today's presentation. Thanks so much. Yep, thank you very much for your invitation. Yep. Mm -hmm. Bye. Okay, bye-bye, yep.